So our third topic for the day is getting connected with the pipeline. And the first thing is, is um, yeah, we we're going to go through all of this, so there's the cute module overview. But take a look at this. <laughs> What's the pipeline? First of all, look at the character here. See this character? Okay, this is located above, like it says right here, located above your enter key. And the reason I say it like that is because a lot of folks don't even know where this character is. Let me give you an example. So, get service pipe. What's gonna happen is, is get service is gonna go out and get a collection of service objects. They're technically called service controllers and you're gonna see what all that is later. But it's gonna grab all of those services and then it's going to send them. And I'm, I'm, I'm not talking about a text representation. I'm, I'm talking about the actual service objects themselves. It's gonna send them one at a time across this pipeline. What do you want to do next? to these services. Well, let's narrow this down a little bit. Let's just do the name bits. Take a look, it's running. Take a guess what I could do if I wanted to stop this service. You probably could guess that there's a commandlet called stop service, and you would be correct. There is, there's one called stop service, and you can specify a name, but here's the interesting thing. I can pipe it to stop service, if I could type it. Here's what's going to happen. We're going to take that bit service, we're going to send it across that pipeline, stop service is going to grab hold of that and do exactly what it says it's going to do. It's going to stop the service. Now we're going to talk a little bit later in more detail about how this pipeline works because it's crucially important in troubleshooting, but just take a look. Well, I wonder what it did. Well, let's run. Ah, it stopped it. Now I can pipe and I could even say start service and I'm going to use a pass through on here that'll show me the results of what I'm doing. And now it started again. Now I know that's a simple pipeline, but that concept of taking something, sending across the pipeline to have something else act on it is very important. And we can continue. We can pipe from one thing to the next thing to the next thing. So as an example, let's start out with a couple of cool things. Oh, hey, first of all, Jeffrey, what do you think? Uh, I just love to ask people this. Oh, don't be careful with the inner key. <laughs> What do you think, Jeffrey? Is yeah. that going to do what I think it's going to do? Yeah, don't you don't want, you don't want to do that. <laughs> I know. You don't want to do that. Guys, we, we, we're going to show you. The pipeline is very powerful. It can also allow you to make silly mistakes. So It's worth pointing out, PowerShell is a powerful tool. A powerful tool. Like a really sharp knife. Um, if you, a really sharp knife, super, super useful, probably don't want to give it to your kids, right? Or, or you want to pay, <laughs> you know, you want to be thoughtful about this stuff. PowerShell, you can do some uh, damaging things. And so often we, you know, give you techniques to deal with that. But indeed, you know, don't right. complain if, if, if you say, oh, well, geez, I removed all the files from my file system. Power, darn PowerShell. Yeah. By the way, I did that actually. I was, I was, I was, I was giving an example of how to do this and, and the guards that we have, and I forgot to put that in and I hit carriage turn. And it turns out if you kill LSASS, bad yeah, things happen. Bad things. Bad things very, happen, especially when you're in front of like 700 people doing a demo. Very bad things happen yeah, that I, way. Strongly not recommend Because it. I've hit the enter on the get service, stop service, and it's just not cool. PowerShell doesn't ask you, are you sure? until later when we show you how you can get it to, but it doesn't, so it assumes you know what you're doing. Um, let me do a, a, an example here of another pipeline thing. Let's talk about CSVs for a second. A lot of times, export, here's a command, let export CSV. Guess what export CSV is gonna do? It's gonna take this information and export it to a CSV. And so I'm gonna put in a path of C colon, let's just call it service.csv. You guys know what a CSV is, comma separated file. And yes, you can change the delimiters. If you look at the help file for export CSV, you can change the delimiters and modify how it works. But let's take a look at this CSV. I'm gonna open this up in Notepad, not the correct tool for looking at a CSV because it's gonna look at this text file, but I just want you to see, see all that, yep, it's all comma, comma separated. But here's, here's one of the interesting rules about PowerShell is if you can export it, you're gonna wanna import it at some point. You're gonna to wanna to work with that data again. So if you can export it, you can import the CSV. So import CSV. Uh, I forgot what I called it, but uh, not that, there we go. 
And now all that data comes back and it's formatted correctly and it's attached correctly so I can actually work with it now. Now, um, these are simple examples of the pipeline, but we're also showing you some, uh, some great export stuff. So besides exporting, like to a CSV, there's my favorite. Oops. Command line XML. I love XML. XML is the greatest thing since the automation of sliced bread. Um, great example. You guys used to do online banking years ago. You'd go to the, uh, you buy something, swipe your credit card. Three days later, it would show up in your account. Mm. Today, you swipe it. When's it show up in your account? Just as it finishes swiping. It's XML, baby. It's XML. Uh, so let's uh, export to XML. And here's what I'm going to do. Instead of doing uh, get service, I'm going to do get process. I like that. And I'm going to make a little, I'm going to pretend. I'm going to do this, call this good XML. I want you to pretend something for a second. I want you to pretend that I've just taken a snapshot of a perfectly running, a perfectly good running machine. It runs perfectly. And I've just snapshotted its processes. Now, if you blink your eyes, pretend for a moment that now I'm working on a non-perfectly running machine. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to compare the good machine to the non-good machine. Yeah, to, imagine those, instead of notepad and calc, imagine that was some malware. Yeah, exactly. I'm just using notepad and now, the, the compare object, I'm just giving you an example of how the pipeline and how using commandlets um, can, can uh, be very useful to you. So I've got a reference object. Now, I want you to notice I'm going to use uh, parentheses. Uh, we're going to talk more about parentheticals, but this means do this first. And what I need to do is I need to import the, the good XML file that represents the good machine. And then I want to compare that to this currently running machine. Now, when you run get process, there's a lot of information that comes up. What I want is I just want it to compare the names of the processes right now and see if there's a difference. So what I've done is I've exported uh, my process information with the pipeline, and now I'm just going to compare it. Notice the site indicator points to the bad machine and is saying, hey, look, calc and notepad are running on that and as opposed to what's on the good machine. This is an example of how you're going to start to be able to build commands with the pipeline to do something and then use other commands to achieve your results. Imagine comparing two machines, the software that's installed on them, and making you want to make one machine look just like another. So there's a lot of things that we can do with building a pipeline. One last example, and then we'll take a, a short point break. Out, oh, yeah. You know, so what Jason just showed you is freakishly powerful, <laughs> and we're going to drill into it in, in, in the future. So what we did was we took a, a set of live objects, and we compared them against an XML file. Like, how do you do that? And the answer is the magic of PowerShell and these things we call objects and object adapters. And of course, if you just tried to compare these things, it would say, they're completely different. So he didn't. He said, I just want to compare them based upon their name. And so what you've done, okay, what we've really kind of led you to is, again, you think about what you want to do, you type it, and the magic of PowerShell is able to take these incredibly complex stuff and present it to you in a very simple world. Oh so let me show you a, few, a couple other command line things, and, and, and Jeffrey will be adding in um, stuff here, uh, just so you can get the idea of, of kind of what's going on. Besides exporting out to like CSVs and XML, there's some other things you can do. So get service, uh, everybody always wants to know, uh, how do I put something into a, just a text file? Well, you know, first of all, you could have found out file by looking for get help star file or st something like that, which is, Totally awesome. And you'll find OutFile. OutFile has, if you look at the help file for it, wants you to give it a path and, um, and you give it a path to what you want to use as a, uh, for your text file. So test.text. And you can get the content. Did I say get the content? Yeah. You can get the content from a text file. You know, I wonder if there's anything that could help me with getting content from a text file. Oh, looky, get content. The help system, help system's your friend. So you can get the content from a text file by just using get content. And, and I think I call that test.txt. And there's all that get service content that I just put in a text file. But wait, 
there's more. You can send stuff out to a printer, out to a printer, out printer, out printer. Hmm. So there's a set of things you could set it out to. There's, I, wonder, I wonder how we could find a list of the things that we could send stuff out to. Yeah, no, you just, oh. just out. Just start with out. Start with out, yeah. <laughs> well, but here, look, there's a ton of stuff that we can send for out. Um, so, again, the help file is your friend. Besides sending stuff out, there's also creative ways to do stuff. So, get, service. I love this. This is one of my favorite things. We also have convert to commandlets. Convert to CSV. Now, this is going to make more sense later, but, well, you, you just had an export CSV. Yeah, and we have a convert to CSV. The difference being for right now, when you do an export CSV, you're done. You're, you're, you're done. When you do a convert to CSV, we're going to leave that stuff in the pipeline in case you want to pipeline it and do other things to it. So The way I think about it yeah. is uh, export is convert coupled with I'll put it to a file. Yeah, I, 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 excellent, excellent, because... If you do an export CSV, you have a mandatory where you have to send it to a file. So think of it as a convert with an out file already built right in. So we have the converts, but I want to show you one of my favorite ones. He, 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 he. Um, did I mention it as a web guy? Uh, anyways, the, uh, uh, and I want to pick just a couple of properties for this. I'm going to take name and status. The reason I knew that convert to HTML has a dash property parameter and it had chihuahuas that would take multiple arguments is because I looked at the help file. So it's going to convert it to, as you would expect, HTML. And at this point, ah, there I did it. It's the cleanest HTML, by the way. <laughs> um, it did exactly what I asked it to do. But here's an example of me saying, look, I, I don't want it to my screen. I now want it in a file. I want it out to a file. So let's pipe it out, file. And let's call this uh, just uh, test.htm. And, and you guys know if you have an can H... You, can you reduce your... Go down a little bit more? Oh, yeah, it's yeah, yeah, cut yeah, off. yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks, guys, for telling us about that in the, the yeah. discussion thing. I want to lower my yeah. command down so now that picture-in-picture... In, picture, in all yeah. its glory. In all of its beautiful glory. <laughs> and you guys know that if you double-click... Did I say double-click? Yes, I said double-click on an HTM. It'll pop... Well, see, no more double-clicking. No more mouse. No more mouse. So what I'm going to do is just say C colon... Test HTM and PowerShell will launch it up there for me. Do, do you get? I just made a web page. How many developers did that take? Uh, and if you look at the help for convert to HTML, you're going to find that you have a lot of options to make this pretty. Uh, there's a lot of ways to make this very pretty with tables and all kinds of, using style sheets and so forth. So it pays to look at the help. But this is a good example of piping from one command to another to achieve a certain result. Um, so let's take a look at what else we got going. We got to, to the web page, and you know these are just some examples of, of piping some stuff. Oh, we're going to have to talk about stuff that kills, because we almost I almost screwed up earlier. Yeah. This and is fun. This is fun. So let me, and Jeffrey, you, you can help me out here with this yeah, one because yeah. I'm going to get service and I'm going to do stop service. And I want to know if this works or not, but seems kind of risky to me. Yeah. What can I do? When in trouble, fear or doubt, run in circles, scream and shout. <laughs> <laughs> so, no. <laughs> That's what they used to teach. Okay. You. That's, uh, what, <laughs> that's what they used to teach uh, kids at Boy Scouts when, when you go on a trip. Oh, so no. Here's the thing. When you're ever so, I once dealt with an admin who said, you know, every now and again, I'm uh, you know, it's late and doing something, and I realize I'm about to hit the carriage return or enter key, and I realize if I get it wrong, like that's the end, right? I'm I, I'm going to be fired. Muffy and Buffy are not going to go to college. And it's just going to be bad. It's going to be and bad. I thought to myself. Boy, what are we doing that we create an environment where somebody, that's the world that they have to live with? And so in PowerShell, if you ever have something that you're uncertain of, you can always type minus what if. Like, what if I did this? What would actually happen? And you would get... Dun, 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 dun. And it tells you what it would do, but it doesn't actually do it. Now, the, the, the best part is that it tells you what it would do, 
but it didn't actually do it. And if you look at my screen, it says, yep, I would have stopped these services. Now, if you're thinking to yourself that, oh, well, this is a nice, fast way to shut down my computer. No, 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 no. <laughs> this is going to blue screen way before it gets shut down. So, well, it won't blue screen, but it's yeah. going to stop somewhere around PowerShell service host somewhere in there. It's Muffy and up. Buffy would not be going to college yeah, after not, this one. <laughs> yeah. So you're not going to want to do that. But something to keep in mind, we also... Besides what if, and I use what if all the time because, you know, things can be dangerous that you're trying out. We also have dash confirm. And dash confirm is a what if with do you actually want to do this? Now, I'm obviously not going to say yes to anything and certainly not yes to all. So let's just, I'm going to put my finger on the L right now so that it, nothing happens. But I want you to notice it is showing you both what it will do and then asking you, do you want me to do this? So people ask all the time. PowerShell doesn't ask me, are you sure? Yeah, because PowerShell's not for sissies. But sometimes <laughs> you need that capability. So I'm going to hit L. <laughs> and please don't, don't actually do anything. Yeah, that'd be good. Hey, can I show them something? Yeah. Okay, so remember, so at some level, this isn't that interesting, right? Get service, pipe to stop service, right? Uh, minus what if. I mean, okay, but who is going to do that, right? You're just not right. going to do that, right? But remember what I said earlier, right, about this, like, programming with hand grenades thing. What I said <laughs> was, okay, so let's see, there's this bits thing, and I, I don't remember what the heck it was. So what I'm going to say is display name, something to do with bits, and uh, or maybe it was something to do with BI, right? And then... And then stop service, service. Now, did I get that one right? Now, this is the more f realistic thing. Did I get that one right? Because maybe BI star maps to BIP service, and maybe it doesn't. So what you do here is you say, what if? And you're like, yeah. oh, 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 no. Good thing I didn't do that. Now, at this point, you could go and say, well, okay, well, why did that match? Oh, I see biometric. And then, oh, I see compatibility. Ability. Now, Ooh. if you wanted to, you could go in here and try and like tweak this thing, right? And, and do this. But instead, you can just say, no, you know what? It's close enough. Confirm. And you say, BitLocker, yep, that's the one I want to do it to. So you, you stop that. And then this one, you say, no, that was the only one. So you say, uh, no to the rest. And now I've stopped GSVBI. Oh, 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 I got the oh. wrong one. Oh, you know what? I shouldn't have stopped BitLocker. That was a bad thing. Yeah, I think that might have been. <laughs> <laughs> well, great example of a practical use of <laughs> dash confirm. I'm no, now, that's perfect. I'm, I'm now out of compliance with corporate policy. There you are. <laughs> these, these doors might come bursting, bursting open. open. Well, so let's, uh, hopefully let's start they, that. They, they will not burst open. So, guys, this is your first introduction to the pipeline. We're going to go much deeper into this pipeline, but the concept, Safe. again, is you have a commandlet. You're going to pipe the results of that commandlet to the next one. So do this, then do this, then do this, then do this, until your needs are done. And what you're going to notice is as we go through this and you get more and more commandlets, you're going to see that the way you're thinking about the, solving the problem is the way that you'll actually be building the commands in the pipeline. Now, you don't have to do everything as a one-liner. And one-liners are great, and we're going to do a lot of them in here. But we're also going to do scripting where, you know, a one-liner is, you know, when it's, when it's half the page, you're probably a little out of control at that point. <laughs> but you can is the idea. Now, before we go too much further into the pipeline, Jeffrey, let's, let's do this. Uh, you know, uh, I've got a slide here, so let me show everybody where we're at. So, guys, again, make sure you're asking questions, all that kind of stuff. And, and for all the people out in the support, the MVPs and everybody who's contributing, thank you so much for helping us out and answering all of these questions uh, that are out there. Um, let's go into um, extending the shell a little bit. And there's, I, I, this is a fascinating conversation for me because I can't remember the exact number, but I think when PowerShell 1.0 came out, I think there was like 192 commandlets. That's all, well, that's all we could do was like 190 things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then PowerShell V2 came out, and there was 236. Well, there's only 236 things that we could do. But we need to do more than that. I mean, we, we need something that's extensible so that we can do. So how do we get more than just the core PowerShell commandlets? Who's responsible for all of that kind of stuff? 
It takes a village, my friend. It takes a village. It takes a village. <laughs> yeah, Light so that's, on a hill. <laughs> that's exactly the point. So the PowerShell team is responsible for the core PowerShell environment, the language, etc. And then you have plugins, right? Or snap-ins, or we now call them modules. modules yeah. And this is where, you know, like our Trust me, you don't want me writing the link commandlets, right? That's not, that's, that doesn't end well. And so what we do is we create an environment where it's very easy for the individual feature teams to write their stuff and ship their stuff. And that's why when you say, oh, well, I, I, I want to do some stuff with PowerShell, uh, where are the link commandlets? What, do you have link installed? Because if you don't have link installed, you're not going to get the link commandlets. So the idea is that the commandlets ship with the thing that needs to be managed. Okay, so we do this through modules. And well, so, in the originally they were snap-ins. Okay, right. so snap-ins, and if you've got PowerShell version one or PowerShell version two, you have these things called snap-ins. Turns out there were a number of limitations with snap-ins. The biggest, you had to be administrator to get them installed, and um, there's something else. Well, uh, oh, you couldn't X copy deploy them. Yeah. And modules now, modules is basically uh, kind of conceptually modeled after the module or package modules of uh, Perl and Python and Ruby, uh, but actually it's much richer than those, much richer than those. But the idea is you'd be able to package up your stuff and then X copy deploy it and then you import your modules. So let's take a look. First of all, on what Jeffrey is saying is, and I think this is, it's a, you guys, all of you guys have run the MMC before. And you know the MMC. You can file, add, remove, snap in, and you get a list of stuff here that you can add in. I want you to notice on mine, I happen to have some of the Active Directory snap ins. You guys know that in order to get those, I had to install something. And in this case, I had to install the remote server administration tools to get the Active Directory ones. Well, it's the same concept when you're working with PowerShell. Do you have the product installed? Well, I have the remote server administration tools installed, and so I'm going to get those modules. Let me show you. PowerShell has a command called get module. This will show you what's currently loaded up. However, list available will show you the modules that are available. Now, I need to just tell you right now, I, this is very confusing. In V2, yeah, yeah. in yeah. V2, first of all, you're not going to see what you're going to see on my screen in V2. You're not going to see it in Windows 7 either. What you're seeing here is Windows 8 running the Windows 8 remote server administration tools, and I get more modules than you do. Because he's cool. Well, not because I'm cool, because I've upgraded. Um, so on, I know your corporate standard, you're, you may not be doing it yet, but your admin box needs to be running V3, and as you're going to want, it needs to be running Windows 8. Okay? So, but at any rate, let me just show you. God, I, I, I'm not the guy that works for Microsoft, and I'm the one over here. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you can see I get this giant list of modules. And notice, one of the modules at the very top here is called Active Directory. The reason I have that module is because I installed the remote server administration tools. Here's what that module contains. Commandlets. Commandlets that let me manage Active Directory. If and you have providers. Uh, and what? And providers. But we didn't talk about providers. providers. We haven't talked about providers yet, but yes, and providers. If you have a module with commandlets, here's the beautiful thing about PowerShell v3. You're going to love this. When you use get help, get help knows how to look through those modules, even if they're not loaded. So get help, I want you to show me, do I have any Active Directory commandlets? I want you to notice that, yes, there's a lot of things with AD in it, and I could have refined the search better, but that's kind of my point, is I want you to see that there's a whole bunch of AD commandlets here. You'll recognize AD computer as this will give me Active Directory computers. The help system, the help, get help knows how to look into these modules, find these commandlets to show them so you still have complete discoverability. And when you want help on the command that you found, get help, get AD computer, it'll give you the help for it. When you try to use the commandlet, this is one of the biggest features for me personally in V3 is when you try to use the commandlet, and I think I may have used this one earlier, so you may not see it flash on my screen, but take a look. Up, oh, it just ran, but let me do this. I'm going to close my console and reopen it because I, I want you to see this. If you can catch it on my screen real quick, <clears throat> let me. The other way to do this? 
is do a do a get module. We'll show it. What, yeah, get module. Okay, let's do that. We're gonna do get module. Yeah, carriage turn. So these are the currently oh, loaded yeah, yeah. modules. Right, these and are now, the currently loaded yeah, ones. Yeah, so now do it, and then we'll and do it. And now, yes, thank yeah. you, thank you. So these are the currently loaded ones. Now watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to do get AD computer, and watch what flashes across my screen real quick. Just, I, boy, that was real quick. I don't know if you caught it. It actually dynamically loaded the module for me so that I had the command. And notice the command it ran. I didn't have to do anything special. The reason I'm making a big deal about this, and here, I'll show you, and get module. Get module. Now you'll see that. It automatically loaded the Active Directory module for me. Reason I'm making a big deal about this in V2, your life sucks because it doesn't work that way. <laughs> let me tell you, and I'm, I'm sorry, sir, but this in V2, this was painful. Because in V2, get help would not find the commandlets unless the module was imported. Yes. So you had to know what the module was first, then import it, then you could discover, see it didn't quite work, they fixed all that with V3. Now it works just like I need it to work, and when I run the command, the module loads. So I'm not loading modules unnecessarily, yep. and I'm, um, if I'm writing scripts that are using the commands, it just loads what it needs, and I don't have to worry about it. It's a God, beautiful world. It, it's a beautiful world. It's a be you, you got any more on modules? Because that's about all I got on modules. Well, you can do... But, do we get to this now? What do, what do you want to do? Modules on other machines, implicit remoting? No, we'll do Oh, that. no, we'll do implicit remoting. Oh, oh, boy, what are you going to talk about? Yeah, we'll get yeah. to that later. Yeah, it's so, so cool. It's so cool. It's so cool. So let me show you the slides, guys. We've got all this. Yeah, you know, that's the, an after lunch thing. They'll yeah, need, like, high they, energy. They, they, yeah. And let me just warn you right now, because we're only about 30 minutes or so away from uh, taking meal. a meal break. Meal. A meal break, that's yeah. That's the international term for lunch. Yeah, because we're we're taking lunch. Um, is is that don't don't eat a lot because you don't want to fall asleep. Yeah, after lunch, have some uh, coffee. It's, it's have some coffee. So we've got everything in the slides, and PowerShell three dynamically uh, loads the modules for you, and you can you can discover all of your commands. Thank God for V three makes this much easier, and so uh, you can work with your commands, and off you go.